Imagine for a second that you are a British company and the government passes a law that by oh, 2030, there are going to be no more uh, combustion engine cars produced, no more diesel, no more petrol engines. Those are going to be slowly phased out and we're all going to go electrical. If you are a, a business person here in the UK, then you've got a massive opportunity because <laughs> here's the thing. In Europe, there is currently, I believe, one battery factory. I think it's in Germany. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's in Germany. There might be two others, but I don't think they are fully operational yet. So there is a massive opportunity. And of course, post-Brexit, it's far easier and a lot easier, especially for just-in-time systems, if you can create all the batteries for all the future cars that the UK is going to make in the UK. Because every single electric car is going to need a battery. And not just potentially electric cars as well. We've seen um, solar panels. The big thing, if you've got solar panels, you've probably had a lot of phone calls about trying to, you know, buy a battery as, as well. That's also what it could potentially provide as well. There's, there's a lot of opportunities. So making a, a, a big British factory to create, you know, batteries for, for cars and, and other things actually is a is a valid idea it's it's not a bad one it's going to go you know all right it's just it's just we'll see how things go and then of course the british government goes you've got a cracking idea there here's a ton of money and of course it's all gone a bit downhill from there. <laughs> so before we continue in this story of the Brexit success story that um, British Vault was, and oh, trust me, this is a, a Brexit success story in every sense of the word, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and on a link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there is the YouTube thank you button as well, uh, where you can again press that. And of course, there's the Pony Club as well. So, British Vault. This whole factory, it was pretty much due to be built. They were building it. They were you know, literally laying the foundations for this place to be built. As far as the British government was concerned, this was a fantastic investment. Here's, here's the money. There you go. But of course, who who should who should uh, shall we say um, start altering the deal? Shall we say uh, who is the who is the Darth Vader in this scenario saying, "Pray I do not alter this deal further." Well, that was of course Rishi Sunak, <laughs> who came along and said, "Well." We don't really want to give you this money unconditionally. So tell you what, if you can get investment uh, and for, for this factory as well, then yes, you can have this money. And of course, along comes Brexit. And what has been one of the key factors we have been talking about ever since 2016 kicking in even more of the past three years. It has been that the UK has had a dramatic, a dramatic loss in foreign investment. People just do not want to invest in the UK because it's no longer a, a surefire business, business win. We're not in the European Single Market Customs Union anymore, which was one of the big things on selling points of the UK. The UK was always sold as we are the gateway to Europe. Come here. 
open your factory in the, in the UK because we're a pretty good place to do business. And, you know, you can have access to all the EU. Of course, that no longer applies now. So whenever the, the, you know, the this, 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 this factory is desperately, desperately going around trying to find investors, no one wants to invest in it because it's not really maybe a potentially sound investment. I mean, we don't know how British Vault was uh, pitching it. We don't know, of course, what their investment portfolio uh, says about the factory. Uh, and we, of course, we don't know how many investors may have reacted to these pictures. We don't know what questions they might have asked about investing in, in British Vault. What's going to be our return on it? What potential problems? You know, there are a ton of questions investors could legitimately ask. Primarily, I suspect most of them would have been about Brexit. But of course, this also goes to show you just how bad this Brexit government really is. Because British Vault collapsing came exactly the same week as Rishi Sunak was out there trying to desperately sell leveling up. And as I said in, in those videos, hey, blink and you'll have missed leveling up completely. So none of the leveling up money went uh, certainly into this area. This giant factory that was meant to be built has now basically collapsed. And it also goes to show you that the UK government has no industrial strategy. There is none whatsoever. They do not understand it. Labour has an industrial strategy, which, hey, that is going to be a massive win if they can certainly get that going. That will be a big win for British manufacturing. But the Conservatives have never had one. Even in the levelling up report that Michael Gove wrote, it said explicitly that the UK government, meaning the Conservative government, needs to come up with an industrial strategy to say what money it is going to use and how it is going to use it. Because after Brexit, you're cut off. This makes big problems. How how are you going to, um, you know, sort the the economy out? How are you going to sort of help British manufacturing in this regard now that we're sort of pretty much you know cut off from from Europe? But of course, for the Brexiteers, that's fine because Rhys Mogg's answer and certainly other Brexiteers' answer was, "Oh, it's fine. We'll just import what we need." <laughs> of course, that itself hasn't even happened because you need jobs here. Then again, as we've said before, these, you know, most of the Brexiteers are crazy, fanatical, free market fundamentalists. And they're also showing that they're massively uh, sort of, uh, you know, fanatical uh, deregulation uh, fundamentalists as well. Recently with the Growth Commission, uh, with the Growth Coalition or the Growth Group, uh, as they're called, being led by Liz Truss. Um, yeah, this this really is a, a Brexit success story. And it's a success story in the way that this is how, unfortunately, British business certainly is being viewed around the world now because of Brexit. It's a success story in the way that, you know, not many investors are going to come to the UK now. It's a success story in the fact that the UK government claimed that it was going to sort of level up. It didn't. It didn't fulfill any of its promises anywhere else in these regards. And it is a massive success story in the fact that for us, it just goes to show you everything we have been saying about Brexit for years is coming true. And if anything, this is a gigantic embarrassment to the UK government, especially the Conservative government, especially to the Brexiteers, who told us very confidently that, don't worry, British manufacturing after Brexit is going to come roaring back. It'll be a massive success. Well, if, if you really did want to make British manufacturing a success, maybe you should have made sure that British Vault didn't fall flat on its face. 
So, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can all buy me coffee. And, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, we'll see you all next time.